What's up guys, Tyler here. Um, today I'm going to be talking about my board game table. What's up everyone? Today in this video I'm going to be talking about the board game table that I built. Um, I'm going to run through the process, what I like about it, what I don't like about it. I'm also going to talk about the things that I was hoping for when I built it. I built my, my table almost two years ago, so uh, there, there's a few things I wish I could change. And uh, yeah, I'll talk about that here in this video. When I built the table, I had some criteria in mind. That criteria, I wanted it to have a recessed playing area. I wanted it to have cup holders and I wanted it to be large enough that I could fit any game on it. So that, those, that was my major criteria. So for the construction of the table, I started by building, I kind of flipped it upside down and built, I uh, attached the OSB to the frame. Um, after that, I put a rail, I flipped it back over once the frame was complete. I put the rail on the side and all I did was take a two by four and put it over it put it on top of it and screw it down. And that's that's what makes up the thickness of the rail is the two by four with the, I can't remember what kind of wood I put over the top of the two by four, but that, that's what makes up the rail size. And it seems like a really good size to me. And in the rail, that's where I put the cup holders. Um, a lot of the other Kickstarter tables have like this rail on the side that you can put attachments in. I don't really feel like I need that or feel like I'm missing out by not having that. Um, I, the, the rail is wide enough that, you know, you could fit a large cup and you can put, put like your cards and stuff up there and, or whatever you're writing on and it, it works really well. The, and then I had to put the side, the sides on and that was kind of a pain getting those cut perfectly. So they all lined up. There was a lot of sanding that went into that process and yeah, it was, it was a pain in the butt. Um, I used I used wood glue, I used wood glue and I took the the finer the finer bits of um, the shavings and mixed that into the wood glue for my my wood putty to patch my joints. I also didn't have a nail gun, so nailing um, some of the finish on the outside and top was a pain. I had to I had to pre-drill every nail hole, and then I would nail it with a hammer because those finished nails were so fine. But that took a long time, and um, the legs, <clears throat> the legs on the bottoms, they're two two by fours screwed together, essentially creating a four by four. And I left one cut down, and I'll I'll show you this. But I left one cut down so that I could put a lag through the other side of it, and that way I could take the legs off if I ever need to. Not a lag; it's a bolt with a a nut. I put a bolt and a nut through it. So I can unscrew that at any time, and then the table is, is just a, you know, it's only it's only the depth of a, it's like six inches deep. So, and it's not too heavy, me and Lindsay were able to carry it down into our basement. So the dimensions of the table are 57 and a half inches by 82 inches, and I have no problem with the length. I really enjoy how long the table is, especially because the room, it had a pool table in it before, and it fits really well in the room. My major concern is the width of the table. One of the things that I didn't realize until the table was done and downstairs was that it was too tall. The table was too tall and it felt awkward to sit at. So I had a cut, I cut all the, I took all the legs back out after I'd already attached them, took them back off, took them back out of the garage and cut them down a few more inches. And that's made the table feel about the right height. The floor to the top of the table, it's about 29 inches. So that feels about right. I also put a bottle opener down on the one side. I found this bear's head at Home Depot and it was in the clearance section for like four bucks. And I think it's, I really, I really think it's awesome. So that's a, it's one of my favorite little features and it sits on the side closest to the bar. So for things that I like about the table, I like, I like how big it is. I wish it wasn't so wide. I like how long it is. I like this. I like the wide side rail with the cup holders. I really like the cup holders. Um, I like the bare bottle opener down at the end. And the table is just, it's super sturdy. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's great. So those are the things that I really like about it. Um, the things that I don't like so much about it is the table's too wide. That's my major gripe. 
it's too wide you have to stand up when you're putting it if you're playing in the middle a lot of times we'll play just on one end so that it kind of reduces the issue or we'll sit like in a corner and that 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 helps a lot but the table's too wide it's too big how can you have a board game table that's too big but i do um another thing is the top it, it, the flooring the vinyl flooring is good but i wish i had like a you know a nice felt finish on the top and eventually i'll probably you know order some custom table topper or something like that to put over the top of it but for now the vinyl flooring works fine and it's super easy to clean and if you spill on it it's not a big deal because i've got the polyurethane coat super heavy over the osb and then the vinyl flooring and i mean it's not it's you know liquids and drinks and things are not an issue so that is one nice thing about it um so far as the cost i spent about 350 dollars when i built the table two years ago and that was for the the two by fours the osb um the cup holders and uh eh, it's probably about 380 with the vinyl flooring so all in about 380. Um, would I build a board game table again? Yes, I would because I really enjoy doing kind of, you know, I enjoy building things and making things and creating things. And it's cool to say, you know what, I built that. It's not like the prettiest thing in the world, but it's not bad looking. And it took me a lot of time, but it was a lot of fun. And anyone who feels like they could or they should or um, that they're interested in doing it, I, I would say do it. I would say, you know, jump on it. You'll figure it out. You'll, you know, work step by step and, you know, just work your way through it and you'll be able to figure it out. So, but it, it is cool at the end of the day to say, be, you know, look at this. I made it and to have it take up such a big, big area in my house is, it's a lot of fun. So I'm super lucky that I was able to have, that I was able to make it. Um, you do need a few tools. So that's something to definitely consider. Um, in talking about Kickstarter. So the Kickstarter that I, I really wish that I had seen was the Jasper um, by BoardGameTables.com, and it it was it was three hundred dollars I think for the base table and to add cup holders and things was a little bit more, but I would have ended up paying roughly the same price. The table's a lot smaller. It does come with a mat. Um, the cup holders are on the side. You can take it on and off, and it has a cover so that you could use it just as a typical dining room table, which isn't, you know, I already have a dining room table upstairs in my house, and I don't really need to cover it up, but it would be nice to cover it up here and there to cover whatever game you're playing so that you could leave it so that the kids don't get into it. But overall, I'm happy that I built my table, and I think it was a super fun experience. Um, if anyone... If anyone has any questions, let me know. Um, I hope that you enjoy the video and will consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Uh, on Don't Be Bored, we spend, we focus the majority of our content on board games, and then we also just do a few fun videos here and there to cover some of the more fun experiences that me and Lindsay have. So, but uh, I hope you enjoy. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.